This is a strange and convoluted question. It's asking me to calculate uh, the binding energy, so I'll write down binding energy, of a cobalt-60 nucleus. Now, in order to do that, what we're going to do is use Einstein's equation equals mc squared, uh, and E is going to be the binding energy. It stands for energy. The M, however, is sort of the tricky part. The M is going to be the mass defect here. That's what we do. The mass defect is the difference between what a cobalt-60 should weigh, uh, calculatedly, and what it actually weighs. So if you figure out those two numbers, the difference between them is the mass defect. You might remember in the video I mentioned that neutrons and protons, when they're squished together inside a nucleus, actually end up weighing less than what they would weigh if you calculated out what they, what they should weigh theoretically. And the reason is because they expend some of their mass and convert it into energy in order to uh, be able to be so close to each other because that actually has an energy cost. It sounds kind of strange. I know it is, but nuclear chemistry really is strange, and so is nuclear physics. But So, let's take a look here. What would a cobalt-60 atom look like? Well, a cobalt-60 nucleus, at least, uh, and cobalt, if you look on the periodic table, is element number 27, which means that a cobalt-60 a nucleus has 27 protons and uh, 33 neutrons. Hopefully we're all cool there. It tells me in the problem that proton weighs, so I'm going to go ahead and write down protons, and I'll, I'll write down neutrons. It tells me that a proton weighs 1.00728 AMU, and a neutron weighs 1.00867 AMU. Now, the cobalt nucleus should weigh this number times 27 plus this number times 33. So what we're going to do is throw this into our calculator and determine what that number is. This number of protons times 27, number of neutrons times 23. What does that come out to be? And I happen to have done that earlier, and the answer that I got was uh, 60.48267. And I'm not honestly giving a rat's behind about the, the proper number of significant figures for right now. It tells me, however, that the actual mass of a cobalt-60 nucleus is 59.9338. So this is what it theoretically should be if you're just counting the weight of the proton for all the protons and the weight of the neutrons for all the neutrons. But it actually weighs this amount. Why the discrepancy? The reason is because of that mass defect. When you cluster these things together, they lose some of their mass by converting it to energy in order to maintain themselves together in that confined space. So I take this number and subtract from it this number. That will be the mass defect. Mass defect. I threw that in my calculator and I got uh, an a difference between these two of 0.5489. So that's my mass defect, or in this case, that's going to be m in my m equals mc squared equation up here. So it's asking what, in, what the binding energy is there. Oh, and by the way, this is in units of amu. The trick here is that I want my energy to ultimately end up in units of joules. So I had to convert AMU into a, uh, an SI unit, which is going to be kilograms as the SI unit for mass. So I'll go ahead and write down point 0.5489 AMU, and then I'm going to do some dimensional analysis. I'm going to write down AMUs here in the denominator, and I'll write down uh, grams in the numerator. One gram happens to be Avogadro's number of AMUs, and that's a big long number, so I'll give myself some space here. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd AMUs are found in one gram. And then, of course, uh, there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. So grams cancel each other out, AMUs cancel each other out. I'm left with kilograms. Well, anyway, so that the final answer ends up being a number in kilograms, and that is your M. You throw that M in here, multiply it by C squared, and C, by the way, is the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. You square that, you end up getting, and multiply by your kilograms, you end up getting a final answer that is in units of kilogram meters squared per second squared. Kilogram meters squared per second squared, just so you know, is the same thing as joules. So this is joules, so whatever answer you end up getting, when you take this number, throw it in there, and take that number, square it, multiply the two together, should be your final answer, and that is the binding energy for cobalt-60 nucleus. Ah, <sighs> that's what you always wanted to know, huh? <laughs>